I spent the last year going through thousands of Minecraft packs and these are the very best ones. Enjoy! You can actually walk on air in vanilla Minecraft. In order to pull this trick off, you have to aim perfectly straight when crossing a one block gap. Sure, Jesus could walk on water, but Steve can walk on air. The dolphin on Bedrock Edition is a lot better than the one on Java and that's because it produces bubbles that you can breathe when you swim behind it. Bet you didn't know that. The beacon texture was changed five times throughout Minecraft's history. Wait a minute, is that a new diamond block texture? I wonder if that's coming in 1.20. Almost nobody knows that when you get stung by a bee, the actual stinger remains on your skin. You can clearly see this when you go invisible. Hold on, doesn't the real life bee die if it loses its stinger? Seems like Jeb wasn't paying attention in school. Some players use honey blocks in complex redstone builds. Amateurs. Real gamers use honey in their walls. If you place two blocks of honey next to each other, you can shoot arrows through them. Castles from stone bricks are a thing of the past. Honey castles are the future. Few years ago, Mojang gave the players a chance to have their cat added to Minecraft. A Twitter poll was started and the winner was Jelly. Overnight, this cat became super famous, almost as famous as her owner. Good times with Scar. Did you know there is a way to make an infinite respawn anchor? If if you have a base in the nether then listen up, because you have to build this thing. All it takes is an observer, a dispenser and some redstone. Fill the dispenser with a bunch of glowstone and you're done. Even though this trick is cool, I think I'll stick to using beds. If you had to guess what item is used in the most amount of crafting recipes, what would you say? Sticks? Cobblestone? Or maybe wood? Well, it's none of these. The title goes to Iron Ingots. Turns out there is a reason why the best Minecraft players always build an iron farm as fast as possible. But there is one item that's even more special than iron ingots, and that's nether bricks. The nether brick is the only block that can be crafted into both fences and walls. It would be nice if Mojang added more blocks like this. But I guess they're busy adding new skins that nobody asked for. You probably have no idea that you can use villages to find strongholds. When you create a new world on Bedrock Edition, the game needs to generate the strongholds and it tries to put them under village meeting points. But Tadusak, why is that? Well, no one knows. Just stick to the good old eyes of Ender. Because finding a village with a stronghold below it is extremely rare. Almost as rare as getting water from stone. Yeah, I just did that. And no, I'm not a cheater, nor am I a magician. I simply took advantage of waterlogging. Mojang added this mechanic in 1.13, which was nearly five years ago. Jesus, time is flying by. Do you know how to get infinite bone meal? No? Well, let me tell you. By using bone meal on a moss block, you'll get a bunch of foliage. Now, if we take these items and throw them into a composter, we will actually make a small profit on bone meal. You probably think that using a boat is safe and that you can rely on it. Well, newsflash, you can't. Sure. Most of the time you'll be just fine. But if you drop from these specific heights, the boat will simply break and so will your legs. Dolphins are known for their intelligence and that also applies to the Minecraft dolphin. When you feed it some fish, the dolphin will swim towards the nearest chest, which is usually a shipwreck. But it can also be a buried treasure or an ocean ruin. Seems like dolphins are much more useful than I thought. They might even be more useful than axolotls, although that's debatable because axolotls also have a secret ability. Not only can these little guys give you regen, they can also remove mining fatigue, but only if you help them defeat the mobs they're fighting. Finding an axolotl can be a challenge though, as they only spawn in lush caves. In Minecraft, the caves underground are heavily influenced by the biomes above. Because of this, you will never find lush caves under forests, plains and savannas. Instead, focus on finding dark forests, bamboo jungles and the big boy taiga biome. You know, the one with the super tall trees. We've talked about walking on air, shooting through honey blocks and getting water from stone, but none of these magic tricks compare to this. Okay Darusak, how did you do that? Let me show you. Start mining some block and once it's about to break, just walk away. Now when you walk closer again, the block will instantly break. You should stop using fences in your farms because they are lame. Rather, you should be using trapdoors. I learned this from my boy iCraftMC and it completely blew my mind. By using trapdoors, you can set up a one-way fence where the animals can go in but they can't leave. Dude, it's funny how Minecraft works. There are a lot of things in Minecraft, but nothing beats the petrified oak slab. 
This block seems to be made out of wood, but it was actually made from stone. That's right, you needed a pickaxe to mine this thing. Since it acted like stone, people used it to build houses that were immune to fires, because at the time, fire used to spread super quickly. The massive structure in the middle of the ancient cities looks like a giant portal. This sparked a lot of discussion. Will there be a new dimension? Is that where the warden comes from? The portal is made from another new block called reinforcement forced deep slate and this block is now going to be the hardest block in all of minecraft without using bugs or glitches how long could you survive in the void this guy had a goal of spending 100 minecraft days in the void in survival the only way to live down there is by constantly eating golden apples and you'll need a couple thousand of these as well as a few elytra so bring some shulker boxes with you after grinding for days he managed to achieve his goal setting a new world record in the meantime Mojang might have 600 employees, but only a few of them are famous. Agnes Larson is mostly known from the Minecraft live events. Lydia Winters was the first woman hired by Mojang and helped with adding Alex to the game. Nathan Adams, better known as Dinnerbone, is a technical director and he is famous for being upside down. There isn't much info about Marcus Toivonen as he is quite secretive about his identity. But we do know that he was the one who created the new Minecraft logo. Years ago, Notch wanted to create a red dragon. However, since then, the idea has been sitting on the shelf. The ender dragon is the final boss, so adding another one seems unlikely. However, Jeb, the lead designer, has stated that if red dragons were ever to be implemented, then players would probably get them from the dragon egg. If I were to ask you what the biggest Minecraft controversy was, what would you say? The 1.9 combat update? Not just tweets? Or what about the new chat reporting nonsense? All of these were pretty big. Until the dream cheating scandal happened. This drama was so big that even my grandmother heard about it. This is the worst arrow type in all of Minecraft. It's called the arrow of luck and you can find it in 1.14 snapshot. You might be confused what luck even does. It improves your chances of getting great loot, whether that's from fish or from chests. There's also an effect called bad luck, which does the exact opposite. Endermen made zombie sounds before Mojang gave them their own sound. In the beta demo, Endermen dropped diamonds instead of pearls. Endermen had green eyes and were able to pick up any block, including obsidian, spawners, and even bedrock. The most annoying mob in all of Minecraft has to be the Phantom. In 2017, it won the first ever mob vote and then went to become the most disliked mob ever. The phantom had so much potential, yet it ended up being just annoying. This is called a wave machine. Mambo Jumbo took it to the extreme, designing several different patterns using minecarts. The wave machine is fairly complex, but we're just scratching the surface. Iron golems can actually attack villagers, but Dadusak, how is that possible? Well, most of the time the iron golem has nerves of steel, good one. Those nerves run out when a firework set off by a villager damages the golem. It's safe to say he didn't expect that one. During some snapshots, players began noticing two oak logs sticking out from the ground. This seemed strange enough because there are no two block tall trees. This mystery was solved when one of the players went into a cave and saw a bunch of leaves. Some oak trees were generating upside down, which explains the wooden logs sticking out from the grass. I can confidently say that you've never heard of the Zombigin. That's because the Zombigin was in the game for just one small snapshot. The developers messed up the code so badly and accidentally created this monstrosity. In this specific snapshot, trying to summon a chicken jockey results in a pig and a zombie riding the same one chicken. Unfortunately, this error was fixed in the next update, which led to this mob almost being forgotten in the history of Minecraft. Mojang has been working on a completely new combat system, which has only been accessible through some secret snapshots. The trident will become the most overpowered weapon because it will give you reach hacks. But but that's not all, the axe has less reach than the sword and every weapon will now have a charge. This is similar to the cooldown we now have, but instead of affecting damage, it affects reach. The shield has also been changed. If you have a normal shield without a banner, then you're lame. Because now having a banner will increase your damage resistance as well as your knockback resistance, making the shield twice as good. You're looking at the most efficient XP farm ever made. It takes less than an hour to go from level 0 to level 1000. This insane farm was designed by Raceworks and it works by summoning 4 ender 
dragons at once, killing them with TNT. The reason why this farm is so powerful is because it makes every dragon drop the maximum XP amount. But even with 21,000 levels, repairing my helmet is still too expensive. Back in 2010, players were asking Notch to add cake. But Dedusac, why cake? I have no idea. And it seems like Notch was confused as well. So he came up with a challenge. If Minecraft wins the 2010 Indie of the Year award, he will add cake into the game. Well, Minecraft won the Player's Choice Award. Minecraft. Thank you. And Notch had to keep his end of the bargain. To be honest, I don't think I've ever used cake as a food source. The brown mushroom is one of the rarest mobs and it even has a hidden feature. Whenever you give it a flower and right click with a bowl, you'll get suspicious stew. But not just any suspicious stew. The type depends entirely on the flower you used. So choose carefully. The most popular Minecraft mod has more downloads than 99.9% .9 of all video games. By going to CurseForge and sorting by total downloads, we will see that there are several mods with over 100 million downloads. And all the way at the top is the Just Enough Items mod with 183 million downloads. Jesus Christ. If we look at the most downloaded resource pack, we'll see that it's the X-Ray Ultimate. Hmm, I wonder why people like this texture pack so much. What is the rarest way to to die, being killed by a villager, getting crushed by entity cramming, or maybe even being struck by lightning. Actually, the hardest way to die in the overworld is from the void. On the vast majority of seeds, that task is basically impossible. However, this world is different. It spawns you in a large cave system on top of a ruined portal. Inside of the chest, you'll find an efficiency 3 golden pickaxe, which you can then use to mine down and fall into the void. That is sack! No, I'm falling! Imagine if you could customize everything in the game. If you could control the ore generation, the sea level, the biomes, structures, and much, much more. Well, this was once a thing, and it was called the customized world type. And the presets it came with were just breathtaking. This is Dylan, and he's the only person who got Notch angry. In fact, Notch was so mad that he even threatened to sue Dylan. So what did Dylan do? In short, he created a website that lets you play Minecraft for free. Notch's marriage was a disaster. Before marrying Ellen, he used to send her new Minecraft updates so she could give him feedback. They spent a lot of time together, probably too much time, as Ellen was even at the Mojang office during the day. The wedding happened in late 2011. However, not even a year passed, and Notch's wife filed for divorce. Even though he still loved her, he's lucky that she didn't leave with half of his net worth. What is the rarest item in Minecraft? A block of netherite? An enchanted golden apple? Or maybe the dragon egg? Currently, the rarest item is a screaming goat horn, which is 50 times more rare than a normal goat horn. The desert fortress has three floors and only the bottom one has chests. But what if I told you that the top floor also has a purpose? If you look carefully, you might realize that the insides are prepared for a full-sized beacon. If you knew this, good job. But we're just getting started. The main behavior of playful pandas is rolling and jumping around, even as adults. And this is often deadly, especially the rolling, as it sometimes causes harm or even kills the panda. I didn't know you pandas had a death wish. Let me help you out. Back in 2013, there was a block that was so rare that even diamonds seemed normal in comparison. And that block was the chiseled stone brick. Back then, there was no crafting recipe for these bricks. And the only place that had them was the jungle temple, which was also incredibly hard to find. Now is the time to get excited, because the following mobs will be introduced to Minecraft in the upcoming updates. First will be frogs, tadpoles and fireflies, but that's not all. Vultures, ostriches and meerkats have all been confirmed by Mojang. What's the biggest Minecraft statue? Back in the day, it used to be the Temple of Notch, however that was made 11 years ago. Today we have sculptures that are 100 times more insane. Take Yushio Tokura for example. He alone made several incredible statues, or this insane plague doctor from Jossie. Dude, imagine being a Minecraft architect for a living. Minecraft is getting more and more expensive. Originally, it used to cost 5 euro, which was then raised to 10 during alpha, to 15 during beta, and to 20 euro after the official release. Today, the game costs around 30 dollars, but that's not where it ends, because we have the marketplace, where nothing is free. But subscribing is free, so please do it. The Minecraft chicken wasn't always a chicken. A few weeks before the official release, Notch 
changed the chicken into a duck. When he posted this on Twitter, it caused a massive turmoil. Seems like Twitter was always a horrible place. Anyway, the situation was out of control and something needed to be done. So a couple of days later, Jeb cleared everything up, stating that this entire thing was just a joke. The strongest weapon in Minecraft is a sign. In 2013, Notch released a troll update that added battle signs. These signs spawned with a random sword enchantment. So if you got a sign with sharpness 5, you now have the most OP weapon ever due to signs having a much shorter attack cooldown than swords or axes. This is the most advanced Minecraft tank. It has 4-way flying machines, aimable TNT cannons, dual slime launchers, missiles that change direction and even a mega new sitting on top. And of course, the tank itself can move. When you get a bunch of geniuses into a single server, you can expect some crazy things to happen. One of those being an automatic wither farm. This beauty right here is able to kill 45,000 withers per hour. Wasn't the wither supposed to be a boss? This cleric villager might seem normal from the front. However, from the back, you will see a creeper face. You ain't fooling nobody, bro. The creeper face can be found in many places throughout Minecraft. It's in the logo, it's on shields, it's in fireworks, it's on the chiseled sandstone, and it's even on the green carpet llama. In Bedrock Edition, finding a village is actually easier than on Java, since they can generate in more biomes. But both editions of Minecraft don't have swamp or jungle villages, despite there being swamp and jungle villagers. This village brings the meaning of abandon to a whole nother level. Minecraft generated a giant cave with an opening, but then it also wanted to spawn a village, so it ended up placing it at the bottom of the cave. I wonder what happened to the villagers. Every world has an end portal except for this one. All the three end portals have been destroyed by ocean monuments. Getting this seed in a speedrun would be truly painful. The chance of generating a world like this is 1 in 42 billion. But hey, you never know, maybe we'll see it in Dream's next manhunt. This cursed woodland mansion generated in the middle of an enormous ocean. If you are a real gamer, then you know that mansions can only generate in dark oak forests. So what happened here? Well, if we remove the mansion, you can actually see that there is a small piece of land in the middle. I guess Minecraft was in a fun mood that day because it decided that this joke of an island will be classified as a dark oak forest and slapped a whole mansion on top of it. At one point, foxes and pandas could wear armor. If you gave an armor piece to a fox, it would simply equip it. Pandas could do this as well, although I don't know how they fit inside. You can replicate this today using commands, which allows you to give armor to any mob. There was a time in update 1.3 where defeating the ender dragon would grant you a whopping 705 levels. That's because experience didn't scale like it does today. Having so many levels on you has to be super stressful. I mean, if you die, you're gonna lose basically everything. Bruh. One of the most underrated blocks in the game is the node block, especially after the 1.19.3 update. Now, node blocks make mob sounds when you put mob heads on top of them. This small update is surprisingly cool. The Vex got a new skin, the piglin head was added, and the creative inventory is finally organized. But it still doesn't have all the possible leather armor colors. There is a good reason though, as there are over 12 million of them. You can literally make an armor set that nobody before has ever crafted. Spectator mode has been in the game for over 8 years and personally I can't live without it. In every single video I use spectator, whether it's to travel faster or to go through blocks. But apparently there is no spectator mode in Bedrock Edition. I told you Java is better. The best redstoners in the world created a server with one goal. Get as far as possible in just 30 days. And let me tell you, this server is ridiculous. There's all kinds of different farms and a mob switch that lets you decide whether you want mobs to spawn. I was very impressed by this and we're only at the beginning. This is the biggest Minecraft build and it's not even finished. For years people wanted to recreate the earth. However, thanks to new mods this project became finally possible. This build will have roughly 140 trillion blocks when it's finished. Hardcore Minecraft is tough. One mistake and it's over. That didn't stop Filza from surviving five years in hardcore. During those five years he didn't use any totems. Unfortunately one day a baby zombie killed him in a cave. In 
2020, Benex beat the speedrunning world record. However, just three seconds later, another speedrunner, Illumina, completed a run that was faster than Benex's, making this the shortest lasting world record ever. Illumina himself discovered that if you remove all the loading screens, his time was actually one and a half seconds slower, which put Benex in the number one spot again. Efo currently holds the record for the longest Minecraft Let's Play. He created his world in 2010, almost 12 years ago. I bet some of you weren't even born back then. Over the years, Efo revolutionized the game, from designing many new farms to inventing creative ways to use redstone, which made him a legend in the community. He's actually the player who got little Darusak into Minecraft. Getting all advancements in hardcore with only half a heart is impossible. Well, one player thought otherwise, Elisaku. During his attempts, he had some unfortunate deaths. In his legendary final run, Elisaku had to be laser focused for 9 hours straight. This Japanese YouTuber created many songs using just note blocks. One of them most likely holds the record for the longest and most complex note block song ever made. You have to have a deep understanding of music to even compete with Takatora. This one song is so well made that I would get copyrighted if I played it. I was surprised to find out that the most efficient farm in all of Minecraft isn't on Psycraft. Instead, these three players from Hammer SMP designed a farm that produces 6.5 million items per hour. They named it the End of Light, since it uses light suppression and other advanced tricks to get so many mobs spawning. Two days before the alpha release, Notch built a wooden house and technically this is the world's first Minecraft build. But I don't think Notch's record counts, because being the first in your own game sounds like cheating. The first player made build is this simple stone bridge. It was made just 49 minutes after the public release, making Muku the first player to build something in Minecraft. The current world record for the highest Y level reached in survival Minecraft stands at 1 million blocks high, achieved by Madworld. He used an elytra with a full inventory of rockets, but even that wouldn't be enough to get you so high. So he had to make a lag machine, which for some reason increases the duration of the rockets, making this record actually possible. Last year I built the world's biggest pyramid in survival Minecraft. It took over 100,000 blocks of sandstone and countless hours of building mining and crafting. I can't imagine how long it would take without an elytra, as I'm pretty sure the ancient Egyptians didn't have elytras back then. Hopefully this build is cool enough for you to subscribe, because I almost didn't finish it. The world's strongest lag machine is this beauty right here, and building it on any server will definitely get you banned. That's because it makes everything take 500 times longer. The lag machine uses redstone repeaters and observers to create a super fast signal, which is what starts the lag. But that Suck. Why would you build a lag machine? Believe it or not, there are actually some good ways to use lag machines. For instance, crashing sketchy pay to win servers. There were three people who launched Mojang Notch, Jacob, oh, shit. and Carl Mannes. I'm Carl Mannes, CEO of Mojang. I cannot pronounce these Swedish names. When Microsoft bought Mojang, all three founders were paid handsomely. So many people became millionaires thanks to Minecraft. Hopefully, I'll join that list one day. So please subscribe and help me get there. I've never met a single person who didn't like the music in Minecraft. The composer C418 has created a masterpiece. What's funny is that he was only making music as a hobby when a notch found him. Wait, he was just an amateur musician when he made this? Mojang's first office was very small. It barely fit 7 people and Notch had to build all the furniture by hand. But it was enough for Mojang to grow. And boy, grow they did. The next office was much fancier. Hello, welcome to Mojang, come on in. With a huge working area full of standing desks and expensive chairs. Notch himself actually said that his ideal team would consist of him and a bunch of Red Bull. The ideal for me would just be like me and a box of Red Bull. Did you know that some Minecraft items were borrowed from a different game? Items such as the Iron Sword, the Apple and the entire leather armor set. These were taken from a 2008 game called Legend of the Chamber. But Dedusak, how could Notch just take these items? Well, because he made the game. You'd be surprised how many things he actually made. In his prime, he was pumping out new concepts left and right. One of Notch's newer ideas is called Cliff Horse and it's literally just a horse running around. What made 
made Minecraft popular? Was it the early YouTubers like the Oxcast? Or maybe the countless rewards received by the game? In reality, it was 4chan. Way back in the alpha days, before survival was even implemented, players would go into 4chan's video games forum and discuss Minecraft. This got so popular that the 4chan moderators began locking MC threads because there were simply too many of them. When Minecraft was booming, Mojang declined every single investor that wanted to give them money. That's because Notch saw what happened to other indie games that sold out to bigger companies and he obviously didn't want to take that route. However, as it turns out, Notch is human too. And when he was getting constant blame for changes to Minecraft's policies, despite not even working on the project, his patience ran out. And that's when he sold the game to Microsoft. Attacking a zombified piglin is a horrible idea. However, if you kill him in one hit, the others will act as if nothing happened. Foxes are known to be hunters. However, in Minecraft, if a fox tries to pounce on a chicken in a snowy biome, it can get stuck in the snow, allowing the chicken to escape to safety. That's what I call instant karma. There is a secret way how you can instantly tame a horse. Normally, it takes up to 20 tries before the horse finally gives up. And let's be honest, ain't nobody got time for that. You can speed this up by feeding him 10 golden apples. I know exactly what to name you. On Bedrock Edition, you can light a campfire by walking over it when you are on fire. Actually, there is a lot of cool things you can do while being on fire. Like extinguishing yourself in a block of powdered snow. Or if you're good at parkour, you can jump twice as high by perfectly timing the fire ticks. Few months ago, the biggest speedrunning discovery was made. Eliotex realized that if you punch an entity right after you start sprinting, the game will stop you from losing hunger. Normally, you'd lose one hunger bar every seven seconds. But with this glitch, you'll turn into Forrest Gump. Every single chiseled block has a unique story. The sandstone has a small creeper. The red sandstone has a wither on it. The deep slate has a weird face. The chiseled quartz has an eye. The black stone has the piglin's snout on it. And the chiseled nether brick has a wither skull. If you try to put looting on a bow, you'll quickly realize that it cannot be done. But there's a way how you can get amazing drop rates while shooting your ranged weapons. All you have to do is hold a sword with the looting free enchantment in your offhand while you kill something with a bow. There is a lot of items that emit light, such as sea pickles, ender chests, or even amethyst butts. But all of these are common knowledge. That can't be said for the brown mushroom. But Tadusak, the shrooms aren't doing anything. Well, if you look closely, you'll see that the brown mushroom actually emits a light level of 1. And with the recent 1.19 changes, this is enough to prevent mobs from spawning. Getting a music disc is hard. You have to perfectly align yourself between a skeleton and a creeper. So let let me show you a better way. Trap a skeleton in a small cage, then set up a lava source like this with a TNT behind it. And finally, dig a hole below the TNT and lure some creepers into it. Once you have enough of them inside, just stand behind the TNT and voila, you have more music discs than you know what to do with. Lightning in Minecraft has many amazing purposes. It can spawn the rare skeleton trap, it can set an entire forest on fire, and it can even turn mobs into different ones. But Perhaps the least known use of the lightning is deoxidizing copper, or in other words, changing the color of it. If you're using fortune just to mine ores, then you're missing out big time. The fortune enchantment isn't exclusive to ores, it applies to almost everything. Amethysts, glowstone, melon, nether warts, seeds, flint and saplings are all impacted by the fortune enchantment. Mojang said that they want all hostile mobs to be fantasy creatures, and since both gators and sharks are definitely hostile animals, Animals, we won't be seeing them inside of Minecraft, although I'd love to swim among sharks. Herobrine is probably the most feared mob ever, which is crazy since he doesn't exist. Or does he? The myth that Notch had a brother who died will haunt us forever. Some say that Herobrine is still in the game. Some say he never was. Others think that Mojang removed him in 1.16. But one thing is certain. We will never know for sure. What's the biggest mob in Minecraft? You might say the Ender Dragon. However, that's a boss. What if we ignore bosses? Then it would be the Giant. Which is funny since he's unused. But we haven't used our secret weapon yet. 
commands. By typing this, you can summon some insane mobs. The world's biggest explosion is fascinating. In real life, that title goes to the Tsar Bomba. What? This is the world's greatest explosion? You should have seen my mom when I got a C from biology. Anyway, we don't have nuclear weapons in Minecraft, thank god. So we'll have to stick to using TNT. A lot of videos claim to have the biggest explosion, but for some reason, nobody lets it finish. Back in 2017, Phoenix SC did some coding and created this. You're looking at an infinite village spanning from border to border. Now I know what zombies dream about. Despite being absolutely enormous, all it would take to completely level this village is one flint and steel. Also, I wonder what would happen if a raid started. The biggest ocean happens to be on 2B2T. Since 2B2T is a dangerous server, it's essential that you escape spawn quickly. And using the boat was one of the best options back in the day. However, this had a side effect. It loaded thousands of new ocean chunks, resulting in Minecraft's biggest ocean. 12 years ago, the biggest Minecraft server had just 20 players. That number grew to 500 during 2011, to 1000 during 2012, and to 6000 during 2013. Those were the early days. 2014 was a huge year, as Mindplex reached 30,000 players for the first time. However, everything changed in December of 2015. Hypixel became the most popular server, and it has been like that ever since. The map item shows the world from above, so players use it to create art. And the competition for the largest map art is intense. Just last year alone, the record was broken multiple times. Firstly, by a player named Garden of Eden. Then, a player from 2B2T built this masterpiece. But even that didn't last. This map was slightly bigger and took the lead. However, there's one person who wants this title more than anyone, and that's Garden. He destroys the second place with his 12.8 million block map art. We've already talked about the biggest ocean, but what is the largest biome ever? In 2016, the Reddit user Ninja Snowman found the longest ice plains biome I've ever seen. This piece of frozen land stretches for more than 10,000 blocks. You see this pink spot? That that's an entire mushroom island, which looks tiny in comparison. There are three different mobs in Minecraft that are completely unused. The Illusioner, the Zombie Horse, and the Giant. These creatures have been in the game for years, and the stupidest part about all of this is that Mojang keeps updating them. Minecraft has two types of players, the ones who think Java is better, and the other ones. This conflict is fueled by the stupid differences between the two platforms. The crossbow has more durability in Bedrock, the Java a composter can be broken faster, tropical fish are bigger in bedrock, you get the point. Having so many pointless differences is just stupid. If you think the human mob was bad, think again. In Minecraft Classic, Notch added this. Luckily, a few days later, he came back to his senses and removed it. However, Notch wasn't finished. Because in Indef, he added Rana, a girl NPC that would just wander around the world. The following day, three extra mobs were added. Steve, Black Steve, and Beast Boy. All of which didn't make it past the next update. There are four paintings hidden in Minecraft's code, and this is what they look like. Earth, fire, water, and wind. However, there is some hope, since they were secretly added in one recent snapshot. That's what we like to see, Mojang. Good job. So maybe we'll see them in the future, or maybe they'll end up like the giant. Mojang has a new habit, and that's postponing things. The Warden is a beautiful example. Announced in 2020, the Warden had to wait two whole years before being in the game. The same applies to bundles, archaeology, and to the entire Caves and Cliffs update, which was even split into two separate versions. The first of which had absolutely no changes to either Caves or Cliffs. Man, I miss the old days when Minecraft updates were way more frequent. If I were to ask you what is the most iconic nether mob in all of Minecraft, what would you say? The Ghast? The Blaze? Perhaps the Magma Cube? Well, I'd say it's neither of these. I think the only mob that deserves this title is the original zombie pigment. The only nether mob that doesn't exist anymore. I guess you could say that the zombie pigment just evolved into the zombified piglin, but I don't know. To me, they're not the same. Dude, I feel like an old grandpa right now. Back in my days, the nether was full of zombie pigment. Standing on a sapling is more dangerous than it seems. Once it grows into a tree, you might start suffocating. I've tried with the warden, and trust me, it's near impossible. But I discovered this. If you use a spruce sapling, you can get him stuck. The warden can't hit you because of the leaves. Oak saplings should also work, but I think spruce is the 
best since the leaves are closer to the ground. An iron golem will get absolutely demolished in a 1v1 fight. It has 50 hearts which is 5 times less than the warden. On easy difficulty it takes 7 warden hits and on hard just 3. That's why potions are again essential. You're gonna need strength, speed and region for the golems. You can also brew some weakness potions for the warden. A gang of iron golems is for sure one of the fastest ways to deal with this beast. Before the 1.8 update you could obtain 6 sided pistons. So how do you get one of these Darusak? The answer is block transmutation. Don't worry, I also have no idea what that means. All you have to know is that this method was used to create invalid blocks. This one mob was so fast that it broke Minecraft. In the 3D shareware version there is a hidden feature that spawns the god horse. It always has diamond armor and 200 HP. This horse is insane. It's capable of reaching speeds of 126 blocks per second and of jumping 34 blocks into the air. What's the best place to hide your items? Inside of a furnace? What about a minecart in a wall? Or maybe a secret base in the sky? All of these methods are for casuals. Real gamers use the void. During the development of 1.13, item frames could be placed below Y0, which is underneath the bedrock. Multishot is one of the strongest enchants in the game. But let's be honest, shooting three arrows is kind of lame. How about shooting a hundred arrows at once? Well, in the 3D shareware update, you could find crossbows with multi-shot as high as level 12. That sounds like something Rambo would use. Don't get too excited though, because this was an incredibly rare villager trait, only having a 0.14% chance. There is one mob that I bet you haven't heard about. Instead of a zombie, this chicken jockey has a villager. But that was like, villagers can't spawn on chickens. You're right, they can't. But we don't need them to. All we need is a chicken jockey with a baby zombie villager, which we can cure. Let's go back to 2013, to one of the most brutal updates. In this version, every now and then, a group of hostile mobs appears. Then, a lightning strikes them and they all receive enchanted armor and weapons. 25% of them will also have wool on their head. This is the only way to get wool-headed mobs in Minecraft. Goggled Gecko created this working rocket with the use of vertical flying machines. It uses both slime and honey blocks, clearly demonstrating how these two blocks changed Minecraft. Zero tick smart pistons are incredibly fast. Anything you put in front of it gets instantly pushed away. But that suck. shouldn't the sticky piston pull the block back? Yeah, it should. And honestly, I can't tell you what happened. Over the years, there have been many different ways of breaking bedrock. Anything from planting seeds to using bats. The headless piston method has been patched multiple times, yet it always comes back. Being able to solve a Rubik's Cube is a flex, but making one in Minecraft makes you a giga chat. That's exactly what Melon BP did. What's even more impressive is that all of the redstone fits into a nice cube. However, there is one issue with this Rubik's Cube. It's painfully slow. Do you like traveling but you never want to leave your house? Just build a walking home. That's what Mambo did, giving his house four legs and teaching it how to walk. That's one creative way to use flying machines. Or if you want to step it up, try to replicate the coffin dance meme. Now there are many ways to kill the ender dragon. Noobs use bows and arrows, speedrunners use beds, and redstone use this monstrosity. You're looking at a cannon that can one-shot literally anything. It uses hundreds of TNT in the same spot to accelerate an arrow to hypersonic speeds. Psycraft players built the most efficient creeper farm ever made. They even shaped it into a giant creeper that can be seen from above. To put the efficiency of this farm into perspective, a million gunpowder an hour is four and a half double chests a minute or five stacks every second. This is Geometry Dash made only using redstone. It has the normal cube mode, the flying ship mode, and you can even create your own custom maps, which are stored in this memory block. If you're someone who plays Geometry Dash, uninstall it right now, because you can play it in Minecraft. You're looking at the fastest witch farm possible. True randomness can never be achieved when coding a game. So, by loading new chunks every tick, you can manipulate the RNG of mob spawning. These guys are spawning hundreds of witches a minute, yet I'm glad if I find one. Back in 2012, a new texture was secretly added into Minecraft. This was the angry villager head, but unfortunately it was never used in game. Java and bedrock villagers are not the same. Dropping an anvil on a sleeping Java villager does nothing. However on bedrock, not only does it wake him up, but he also takes quite a bit of damage. Villagers have evolved a lot throughout the years. Today they have over 100
100 unique skins, all of which come from this naked villager texture. Actually, some of these skins are inspired by luxurious brands. Here's one from Gucci. In 2014, Mojang shocked the entire player base. For one day, they changed everyone's skin to a villager. But not only that, they also added one of the funniest sound packs I've ever played with. Take a listen. Oh! What are you doing? <laughs> Every night, there is a small chance that up to 20 zombies spawn inside of your village, even when you've removed all dark areas. This is a zombie siege, and they only happen on Java Edition, in villages that have over 20 beds. Most villagers are productive members of society, but then there are nitwits. Jeb calls them village idiots, and this is why. Nitwits stay outside later than other villagers. They refuse to trade with the player. They wake up late, and all they do is try to breed with others. Not only do villagers have hidden inventory slots, they also have 4 slots for armor. And with the use of a dispenser, they can even equip that armor and have all of its effects. But Darusak, I don't see the armor. Yeah, the armor is not rendered. But there are certain items that are, like carved pumpkins and mob heads. I find it hilarious that you can have a villager with netherite armor and a dragon head running around. Villagers are probably the smartest mob in all of Minecraft. But that wasn't always the case. Back in beta, all villagers had the name Testificate and they had the same AI as pigs. We all know who kept the pigs AI. Huh? The fisherman is one of the most unique villagers. Firstly, it can be very useful in speedruns because of this one trait. But this is also the only villager that has an old texture on its skin, which in this case is the OG Minecraft fish. The iconic villager sound ah. actually has a name. It's called Herner Jusger, or at least that's how someone tried spelling it out on Reddit. The developer Dinnerbone liked this name so much that he added it as one of the splash texts. If you didn't know this, then please subscribe. It takes one second. It's common knowledge that cats are better than dogs. And the villagers agree, as you can usually find multiple cats roaming around the village. The amount directly depends on how many beds there are in the area. But there can only be a maximum of five cats per village. That's more than I have. Enchanting used to be super hard. It required 50 levels instead of 30. And it took all the levels from you. The first enchanting tables were made from cobble stone. There used to be a glitch where the only enchantment available was feather falling. If you enchanted something on a server, you couldn't log off. Otherwise, the item would lose the enchantments. Ghasts used to shoot burning snowballs. Unlike today, ghasts easily survived multiple fireball shots. Nether portals were intended to spawn ghasts in the overworld. For a while, there used to be a funny bug where ghasts were shooting diamond helmets. There was once a secret item in the game. It was the fire item. It worked the same way flint and steel does, but it also had another use, crafting chainmail armor. In Bedrock Edition, you can still get soul fire as an item. The Caves and Cliffs update gave us a ton of amazing seeds, and this is one of them. You might see a cool mountain, I see a water park. Whee! This mountain is literally asking to have a tower built on top of it. I can only imagine the view. There's no way to mine bedrock, or is there? Well, in this world, a mineshaft generated at Y level 2, meaning it's cutting straight through bedrock. Since this mineshaft is so low in the world, there's actually exposed diamonds everywhere. The man if I do. This is the best Minecraft seed. Not because of its looks, not because of any rare terrain, but because it can be beaten the fastest. In fact, it takes the best players less than two minutes to defeat the Ender Dragon. Tarasak, how's that possible? First, you spawn in a village where you get the beds. Then, you go to a ruined portal, which is how you enter the nether. All of that in the first 30 seconds. Next, you have to parkour through the nether, build another portal, go to the end, and kill the dragon with just 4 beds. Finding a spawner is great, but what about finding 35 of them? By digging down on this exact block, you will find a mineshaft. But this isn't just any old mineshaft, this is actually a network of 5 different mineshafts and 10 individual dungeons. You have spiders, zombies, skeletons, cave spiders, and there's even a sniffer spawner. Oh wait, wrong update, sorry. This mangrove forest is super rare. Well, not necessarily the forest itself, but what's at the end of it? The world's first quintuple structure. There's a village, a ruined portal, a pillager outpost, a shipwreck, and a desert fortress all in the same place. On this seed, it's actually possible to beat the game without ever leaving the spawn chunk. Normally, this would be impossible since strongholds generate thousands of blocks away from spawn, and to beat the game, we kinda need an end portal. However, that couldn't stop 
help the players from Minecraft at home because for months they kept searching, going through tens of millions of seeds until they found this one. You spawn in a village and with the help of a cleric, you can directly trade for Eyes of Ender. Here we have a woodland mansion that's over 100 blocks tall. Surely this is the tallest mansion ever found. Right, Datasak? Wrong. There's actually an amplified world which has a woodland mansion so high up that the top floor gets cut in half by the height limit. Sometimes it feels like villagers and pillagers have this competition of who can build their house higher. And I must say, the pillagers are in the lead now. What's the rarest island that you can find in vanilla Minecraft? The player LJ3 might have found it. You're looking at the world's first mangrove swamp island. What makes this so rare is that mangrove swamps actually cannot spawn in the ocean. That's why there's a small beach. Just be careful because you can easily get lost in these roots. Slimes are the most common mob in all of Superflat and also the most annoying one. However, in 2012, this was much, much worse. Slimes were literally everywhere. It was so bad that getting into a village was nearly impossible. Fortunately, in the next snapshot, Mojang reduced the spawn rates. In 2012, Mojang added super flat customization and we can have some fun with it. If you add a sapling layer, you will have a world that will try to eat you alive. You can even create a working TNT run in super flat. But the coolest thing happens when you select the desert preset, remove every layer apart from sand and dig straight down. This will create an endless wave of falling sand and it will probably crash your computer. A few years ago, there was an insane glitch where you could combine two different terrain generations. Half of your screen could be the default preset and the other half could be an ocean. This bug was extremely rare, so only a few players found it. The mixed world is amazing. However, I've left the most insane facts for the end of the video. Throughout Minecraft's history, there have been a few ways to get the bedrock item in survival. When endermen were added, they could pick up any block. So if you found an enderman holding bedrock, you could get the actual item. But recently, Raceworks decided getting the item isn't enough. And so he built an entire bedrock farm. If you place a turtle egg on the coordinates 0, 0, 0, it will cause every single zombie to start walking towards that location. I have no idea how this glitch works, but it's pretty amazing. The next glitch puts Elytra to shame. The Ravage launcher can actually teleport you thousands of blocks within a few seconds. That's because the Ravager has a mechanic that deals a ton of knockback if you stand right above it. Every time you block a shield, there is a 50% chance that the Ravager will do this roar. And once it does, you'll be sent flying. Bedrock Edition has a really cool glitch. If you place down a bunch of slime blocks, put a boat on top of them and start jumping on it, you will fly high into the air once you hop in the boat. This bug has been a thing for a long time and countless players have reported it to Mojang, but they refused to fix it. When Jeb created the squid, he took the cow files and copied them over. However, he forgot to remove the code for milk. So for a while, squids had their own milk. Honestly, this makes me wonder what that would taste like. Anyway, what's even funnier is that squids weren't limited to just water. They could fly anywhere. This is so wrong. There is a lot of creative ways to hide your loot. And I think I found the best method. Push a solid block into a minecart chest from the top, which hides it completely. Now all you have to do is aim for the center and you should be able to access your stashed loot. I guarantee you, no one is finding this chest. Every one in 140 billion worlds is a repeating seed. So if you want to find it, you should call Dream. These seeds are mind blowing. For instance, you can find a mine shaft that goes on forever or this cursed diagonal ravine that simply never ends. If you're exploring the nether, you have a 0.01% chance of finding 5 striders stacked on top of each other. Not only is this creature unbelievably rare, but it's also extremely useful. So please, don't kill it. The Penta Strider is actually the fastest creature in all of Minecraft, but it doesn't go forward. Instead, it goes upwards. See, hooking the bottom one with a lead and riding the top strider causes you to burst into the sky. The nether is a dangerous place, so the next time you're going through a nether portal, block your shield and once you're on the other side, you will become unkillable. No matter if you're running or jumping, your shield will remain blocked. Unfortunately, if you try eating or placing blocks, your shield will reset back to normal. But until then, you will feel like Superman. You thought that getting the bedrock item is hard? Well, what about items that shouldn't even exist? This is the block without a texture. But Dadusak, what kind of block doesn't have a texture? Well, the image you see is a placeholder texture. 
texture used by Mojang, since it is clearly recognizable in case something goes wrong. The first ever X-ray glitch was simple. You just had to drop some sand on top of your head. But with time, executing this exploit became more and more difficult. The most recent version of the X-ray bug involves pushing yourself into a composter, which will allow you to see all the surrounding caves, structures and maybe even diamonds. TNT duping is one of the most revolutionary inventions in Minecraft. TNT dupers are used in cobble farms, in mining quarries and to kill mobs. Using them makes the game a lot easier. Instead of spending countless hours mining a large hole, all you have to do is build a flying machine with a TNT duper and the job's done. If you're falling and beneath you there's a horse, you can right click it and save yourself. This can also be done with mules, donkeys, pigs or even striders. If you manage to pull this MLG off, you will feel like a cowboy. Dream made this trick popular, using it to escape the hunters in his most popular video. I saw that on Reddit! <laughs> Boats are entities, so they burn in lava. However, you have a split second window in which you can jump on them, no matter if you use a hay bale, a cobweb, scaffolding or powdered snow. With the correct timing, you will survive anything. These four blocks might even be better than the water bucket, because they can be used in the nether. If I had to choose, I would say the hay bale is my favorite, as it reminds me of Assassin's Creed. Most players have no idea that this item can save your life. You can use sweet berries to reduce your fall damage. Although there's a catch, you can only place them on dirt. So the next time you find a taiga forest, collect a bunch of these red things before burning the place to ashes. The sweet berry clutch is pretty crazy, but we're just scratching the surface. I guarantee that you didn't know this about the Minecraft igloo. When dropping from above, you can destroy the roof and land on the bed, which greatly reduces the fall damage. Or if you're feeling lucky, go through the middle and land on the ladder. Now this is only for real gamers, because you also have to open the trap door while falling. You can survive a drop by jumping onto an exploding TNT. You heard me right, the TNT blast can save you from fall damage. That's because the explosion knocks you back, which can result in a safe landing. Now of course you might die from the TNT, so get yourself some blast protection armor. You can even do this with end crystals, respawn anchors or an exploding creeper. There is a 0% chance you've seen this clutch before. In my Minecraft, you can survive any fall if you land into a falling block. This requires some crazy good timing. The way this MLG works is by pushing you to the side when the sand changes states. And if you think about it, it kinda makes sense, because dropping into sand doesn't hurt. In general, attacking the iron golem isn't a good idea. However, you can use this mob to your advantage. The iron golem's attack knocks you into the air, which makes it the perfect tool for clutching. Just shoot the golem in midair and fall right on top of him. If you're lucky enough, the golem will will launch you into the air before you hit the ground. One in eight eggs will spawn a chicken, but we're not interested in that. We're looking for the rarest possible egg, which has a 0.39% chance of spawning four baby chickens. But Dadusak, how can four chickens fit into a single egg? Look, don't ask me, I'm not a biology teacher. All I know is that one in 256 eggs will be the chosen one. It's no secret that Java and Bedrock have their differences, but this actually works in our favor when looking for rare mobs. In Java, baby zombies can only ride chickens. On Bedrock, however, they can ride a lot more than that. Cows, wolves, pandas and even other zombies. But I'd say the most exciting is the Ocelot Jockey. The chances of encountering this mob are 0.013% or in other words, next to nothing. Getting a skeleton horse is a tough challenge. But what about getting the Wither Skeleton Horseman? Currently, there is no way to get this mob. However, in the past, there was. You had to find a skeleton trap, transport it into the nether without triggering it and only then activate it. That would replace the normal skeletons with wither skeletons and voila, you've got yourself an incredibly rare mob. Most people know that the enderman can carry dirt, but he can carry a lot more than that. If the conditions are literally perfect, an enderman carrying a pumpkin is able to spawn a snow golem by himself. The odds of this happening are 1 in 5 trillion. A wither skeleton can't 
normally hold a bow, but if you give it a bow, it will shoot fire arrows, even when the bow doesn't have the flame enchantment. The pillagers didn't always look like this. The original design appeared like a pirate wearing an orange vest. Some zombified piglins have the ability to spawn reinforcements during fights and there is a small chance that one of those mobs is a zombie, causing normal zombies to spawn in the nether. Skeleton horses can be ridden underwater without any issues because they are immune to drowning. Although you can still drown, guardians don't need water to live. So putting one over slime blocks will make it bounce higher and higher until each bounce brings the guardian 17 blocks high. If you think this is crazy, wait until you see the facts later in the video. The illusioner has a really creative fight mechanic. Even if you shoot it with a spectral arrow, he will remain invisible, instead making his duplicates glow. I don't care if you're vegan in real life, but please, for the love of God, don't eat vegetables in Minecraft. Just get yourself a nice juicy steak and you'll make me very happy. Don't forget to cook it though, because eating raw meat is just as bad as eating melons. I hate melons. There is nothing that screams I am a noob more than playing with auto jump. For some strange reason, this feature is enabled by default. However, you should instantly turn it off. Having more enchantments isn't always better. Some enchants that you should avoid include knockback for your sword, foss walker on your boot, and definitely don't put thorns on your armor. But by far, the worst enchantment is Bane of Arthropods. Even if you're scared of spiders, please don't use this enchantment. It's so bad. You're probably using the crafting table when making stairs. However, there's a better way. Somehow, I only found this out recently, but when you use the stone cutter, you actually get more stairs from the same amount of blocks. Are you using the inventory to its full potential? There are a lot of useful tricks that will make moving blocks much easier. But that is sack, everyone knows this. You'd be surprised. Lots of noobs move items manually instead of shift clicking. Please, learn all the inventory tricks. It will change your life. Are you a good Minecraft player? Well, back in the day, this used to be measured by how many crafting recipes you could remember. The piston was one of those items that people would test you on, since it's very easy to mess it up. I bet you didn't know that ponies were once in Minecraft, and this is what they looked like. Now I know what you're thinking. That Usak, that's just a retextured pig. Well that's because this was part of the 2013 April Fools update. This was also the first update that had horses, if you wanna call this a horse. Since servers weren't as popular in the early years, many players simply used a free cracked launcher. And I'm ashamed to admit, I was one of those players. Notch was losing millions of dollars to pirated Minecraft versions, but he didn't seem to mind. If you feed an animal enough times, it will explode. Now of course that doesn't work today, but it did at one point. In fact, this is the same version that had the cow horses. One of the most interesting and unknown commands is slash replace item. Typing this exact line turns you into a unicorn. Using the oak fence will give you a mask. The lead turns you into a detective and the bone will make you feel like a dog. This is how a double chest looks today and this is how it looked 12 years ago. But that Usak they look almost the same. That's not the point. The real difference is what's next to the chests. See, back then you couldn't place two double chests next to each other. Now why is that? Well, it was not just solution to the triple chest problem, since at the time it was actually possible to create triple chests in Minecraft. What is the most cursed block in the game? Some might say it's the piston, others will say it's water. But when Minecraft was starting, one of the most cursed blocks were stairs. Compared to today, walking on stairs was slow and clumsy. Destroying them gave you one single plank. And to top it all off, the inventory texture was straight up weird. If you're quick enough, you can place down a door to create an air pocket and survive because of it. But Adusak, doesn't the lava just burn the wooden door? No, it doesn't. Fire in Minecraft needs air. And since there are no air blocks around the door, it will never catch on fire. One of the Mojang developers released a video on his channel showcasing a new hoglin dance that they would do after winning a battle. At first, Everyone believed this because it was very similar to the piglin victory dance. However, it turned out that this was just a joke. In vanilla Minecraft, magma cubes spawn in sizes 1, 2 and 4. But with the help of commands, we can exceed those limits. This is how size 10 looks like. But that's nothing compared to size 20, which gets completely overshadowed by size 50. But we can go even higher. You're looking at a magma cube of size 100. And the best part is that this isn't even the biggest one. By typing this 
Aquaman, you can summon a magma cube of size 127. This giant has more health than 32 wardens and it deals more damage than a charged creeper explosion. You might have noticed this block. Well, that's mud. You can get mud by either finding the mangrove forest or by using a water bottle on a block of dirt. Mud also has some interesting crafting recipes. Combining it with roots will give us this. What? And adding wheat gives us packed mud, which you can use to craft mud bricks, stairs, slabs, walls, you name it. In 2019, Calvin participated in an event with 15 other YouTubers. During this challenge, he beat the world record for the longest time played consecutively, gaming for 53 hours straight. What's even crazier is that Calvin wasn't just chilling, no, he was streaming this event, being as energetic as possible. This record is mind-blowing, but we're only scratching the surface. FitMC is a YouTuber who makes videos about the oldest anarchy server in Minecraft. However, Fit himself is also a certified gamer. He holds the record for the longest boat trip, traveling 7.3 million blocks over the span of 11 days. When he was sleeping, he put a coin on the W key, so the boat keeps moving forward. In 2019, a player by the name of Time Times set a record for the fastest obtained diamonds in the history of Minecraft. This was done on a specific seat, where you spawn inside of a blacksmith village house, which has a chest containing one diamond. Imagine being the villager and seeing some player appear out of thin air just to steal your hard-earned diamond in third of a second. It usually takes around 10 minutes to win a game of Bed Wars. However, this player did it in just 1 minute and 36 seconds. A lot of people can't build a bed defense in that time. Flimsy has gotten all kinds of Bed Wars achievements throughout the years. Currently, he has an astonishing 37 world records, which makes him one of the best Bed Wars players alive. In 2018, thousands of Minecraft accounts got random deleted. Few days later, Mojang restored them. However, during this time, if a player claimed the name, it would result in two accounts having the same name. Accounts like Smidge, Next and Wavy suddenly had a twin. However, the record for the most accounts with one name is held by Dakwa, which had 72 different accounts with the same name. In 2010, Jeb was sick and couldn't do anything. That's when a friend introduced him to this new game called Minecraft. Jeb spent four days straight playing the game. The real question is, did Jeb discover Minecraft or did Minecraft discover him? If you're a Minecraft OG, you certainly remember the time when Notch was considered a god. He's like a god to me, honestly. I'm so glad they created Minecraft because it's honestly been the best experience of my life. The first time I heard about Notch, I didn't know what he looked like. I didn't know where he was from. All I knew was he created Minecraft, which was enough to give him god level status. I am god. Yes. Notch used to make music in the early 2000s under the pseudonym Marcus Alexei. And honestly, it's not that bad. Maybe Notch's little music experiment was the reason why he was so confident in C418 and was able to see his potential. Even after all those years, Notch still kept his touch on music, hanging around famous DJs and even DJing himself. If you didn't know, he is actually known for throwing crazy parties in his LA mansion, which are full of celebrities and musicians. What's the name of this guy? Steve, right? Well, not quite. His first name was Mr. Minecraft. Only after he appeared in another game called Super Meat boy did the name Steve begin to make rounds. He also used to have a beard which was removed in 2009. However now Mojang apparently wants to bring it back after 13 years. That's kinda random but okay. This will forever change how you see Hoglins. If you stand below a Hoglin you will notice that he has one nostril bigger than the other. Hopefully this isn't causing any breathing problems. Everyone knows that you can respawn the ender dragon. However in a snapshot from 2015 you could summon the the ender dragon by building a creeper face from clay. If you fish while it's raining, you'll save a lot of time. Personally, I prefer to build an automatic fishing farm, because that's much more convenient. Now that I think about it, does anyone actually fish in Minecraft? You can actually get a shulker without the shell in vanilla Minecraft. The strong shell serves as the shulker's first line of defense. But what if we could take that away from him? Well, we can do that by throwing a potion of invisibility on the shulker, which gets rid of 
of the shell, exposing the little vulnerable head. Not only does the blindness potion greatly reduce your vision, but it also prevents you from sprinting. This is significant, because walking is super slow, but it kinda makes sense. I mean, have you ever seen a blind person run? I'm going straight to hell for that joke. There are some animals that take extra damage from freezing, way more than the player does. This only applies to fire related mobs, like striders, magma cubes and blazes. They will take 5 times more damage from freezing than all the other creatures. That's why a lot of new nether farms include powdered snow as a way to kill the mobs. Wait, you can place snow in the nether but not water? In 2009, the first public version of the game was released. And exactly 10 years after, Mojang added a little surprise into the game. For the next 3 days, every single cake had a 10 above it. Which, strangely enough, was made from white concrete. It's crazy to think that Minecraft is literally older than half of my audience. I'll show you a way to create floating rails. You'll need a bunch of solid blocks, some trapdoors and of course rails. Place the trapdoors against the solid blocks and put the rails on top of them. Now go below the trapdoors and one by one flip them down so you can see through the rails. This neat trick allows us to walk through the rails as if they were floating in midair. The koala is another animal that is unlikely to be brought in. We already have pandas and polar bears so I doubt the developers are planning to add yet another bear. Plus I feel like they're too similar to pandas, chewing on bamboo, being kinda lazy and looking cute. What do giraffes, elephants and rhinos have in common? They are mostly peaceful and also very big. Which means if the devs were to add them, they would be too difficult to defeat. And for this reason, I think the developers will not introduce these animals. The next mob has to be my favorite, the zebra. I think it would fit so well into the savanna biome. But the game already has donkeys and horses that come in many different colors. Actually, there are 35 different horse variants. It's certainly not impossible that zebras won't join Minecraft one day, although the likelihood of that ever happening is not in my favor. The agent and the NPC are mobs from the education edition and will not be appearing in the official release. The agent, for instance, helps players learn coding. It can be programmed to execute several tasks like planting and harvesting, mining, chopping trees and even building. Did you know that a pink wither was once part of the game? Same goes for the redstone bug or the chicken that laid diamonds instead of eggs. All of these were mobs brought to us in April Fool's updates, but they were made only as a joke. Similarly to the killer bunny, a variant of the rabbit that is hostile towards players, foxes and wolves. Tigers and lions are certainly one of the coolest animals out there, but we won't see them anytime soon, because they would be simply too powerful. A lion would have no problem tearing you to pieces. On top of that, those animals are certainly not passive or neutral, and they don't fit Mojang's criteria. There are many amazing survival builds, but one base stands out among the rest. New Mega Base, otherwise known as the greatest base on 2B2T. But there is a slight problem. Virtually all players on 2B2T use cheats, which makes everything a lot easier. After traveling 28 million blocks on this seat, you will find the largest end city ever. Legend has it that this is the Schalker capital of the world. Walking through this end city without getting levitation is a whole new level of impossible. That makes me wonder, why do Schalkers need their own city? I mean, they already live in a shell. The 2020 mob vote was a disaster because it was completely rigged. Dream used his influence to force Glowsquid into winning, but he didn't play fair. He was straight up lying to his fans. This made the community super mad. And worst of all, Mojang didn't do anything about it. In older versions, you could have epic snowball fights with other players. Snowballs don't hit anymore. <laughs> snowballs will now hit players again. However, what if I told you that this was never the case? Snowballs never actually dealt knockback. This massive myth was caused by one plugin, which is still used on many PvP servers. Torches are by far the most used light source, but that almost wasn't the case. Torches were very close to being a temporary light source. The idea was this. You'd place a torch and after a while it would burn out. Then you could relight it with flint and steel. Notch planned to add this idea into the 2010 Halloween update, although the players had a different plan. They wanted to keep torches permanent and they convinced Notch to scratch his plans. Ah, the good old times when Mojang listened to the community. When talking about dumb updates, we cannot forget the dumbest change ever, the removal of gamma. Minecraft has an in-game slider for brightness. However, even the highest possible brightness is not enough in caves without any light. That's when gamma comes into play. Increasing this number would allow you to see well even at night. But in 1.19, Mojang ran 
randomly remove this feature without any explanation. The Warden is an undead mob. This means he can't drown, is immune to poison and potions of healing damage him. The instant health 2 potion will take 6 hearts, so you'll need at least 42 of them. Once you craft the bottles, brew an awkward potion by adding a nether ward. Then get yourself a glistering melon, that will give you instant health 1. To produce a stronger potion, add glowstone dust. Just make sure to aim for his head, otherwise you'll need way more than 42 bottles. Sand is pretty useful for killing things, as it can be used to suffocate the ward. Or use gravel if you don't like sand. The key is to get him into a hole. You can use pistons again, or just place two trapdoors facing each other and watch how stupid the warden is. This trick works on almost any mob in Minecraft, because trapdoor seems like a full block, so the mob thinks it can walk over it without any issues. And that's when it falls into your hole. Once you capture him, place sand on top and watch him slowly suffocate. If you wanna have some fun, cover the ancient city with magma blocks and the warden will have nowhere to go. You can avoid taking damage by wearing boots with the frost walker enchantment, which doesn't really make sense, but hey, this is Minecraft. Strangely enough, this can be done even underwater and that would actually be ideal, as the warden somehow doesn't work underwater. So I guess you could even flood the area and cause the fight to be ultra easy. You might remember that in my 1.18 video I talked about bundles. This item was basically the budget version of a shulker box. So what happened to them? Well, Mojang said they didn't feel that bundles were good enough. But maybe there's still hope for bundles, because they even appeared in the one block at a time update. Although they had a roughly 1 in 1 million drop chance. This is a stationary projectile and it can be an arrow, a gas fireball or an ender pearl. By unloading the chunks of the projectile when closing the world, the arrow gets stuck in midair. You can craft your own end crystal, but those are lame as they don't have the beam. So how do you get the beaming end crystal? Well, it's actually pretty easy. Place four end crystals to resummon the ender dragon, but exit the world before the dragon spawns. Once you log back in, you'll have an indestructible end crystal on every pillar. Every Everyone loves a nice TNT cannon. And they are pretty easy to make. There is a lot of unique designs. Some are very simple, others not so much. Originally, slime blocks were just bouncy. However, their stickiness is what makes them popular. This mechanic allowed players to invent flying machines. Simply put, the blocks that are sticky made Minecraft more tricky. Storage systems are extremely useful because they sort your items and prevent your chests from looking like this. Yeah, that's one of my chests. This design by Impulse SV is genius. Because because it has been working for the past 7 years. If you're still spending hours manually mining for diamonds, then it's time to change. Build this simple tunnel bore and you'll have more diamonds than you know what to do with. This is one of my subscribers, so if you want to be in my future videos, subscribe now. This is the world's biggest piston door. It's 256 blocks in all directions. John25 made this behemoth in 2020 and since it's so big, it takes a whole day to open. However, the 1.8 update increased the build height, so John immediately got to work creating this masterpiece. Servers like Psycraft and Prototech have this RNG manipulation machine. By loading specific chunks with chests, you can trick the game into giving you the best fortune drops. I'ma be honest, this glitch makes no sense, but it's freaking amazing. In 2013, something happened that set the community on fire. In the 1.6 release poster, Mojang showed a blue villager in the background. The players were hyped, expecting a new mob to be added, but it never came. That reminds me of the green axolotl. I hate when Mojang does this. Have you ever tried to sleep in the nether? If you have, then you've probably learned a very painful lesson. However, for some strange reason, villagers can sleep in the nether without any problems, and no matter how many times they do so, the bed never explodes. Zombies hate villagers and they will do whatever it takes to hunt the villagers down, even if they are invisible. The funniest part is that wandering traders also have this problem. Homie brought his own invis potion just to get completely clapped. Villagers love to gossip. Every day they gather in the center of the village and share valuable information. As someone who grew up in a village, I can confirm this happens. For instance, if you kill an iron golem and a villager sees you, that guy will try to tell others what happened and as a result, all the trades in that area area will become more expensive. 
Everyone knows that villagers have 5 levels, but not many players realize that upon leveling up, they start healing. These pink particles aren't a mere visual effect, they are particles from regeneration. So how much HP does the villager heal Darusak? Well, not much, it's just too hard. The secret updates were 10 weekly patches released by Notch during the alpha days of Minecraft. All secret updates included major new features such as spawners, chickens, boats, redstone and sneaking. Every week there was a new update that's absolutely insane compared to today. Mojang is simply lazy. The golden apple was added because of a joke. Player named JTE included a crafting recipe for gapples at the bottom of her guide. That inspired Notch to actually implement golden apples. His recipe used gold blocks later changed to golden nuggets. Prior to beta 1.7 there were no shears in Minecraft. The way to obtain wool was by punching sheep. They didn't drop any food so it was pointless to kill them. In in-depth sheep spawned without wool. You're playing survival and you need a little help. Just open the world to land and allow cheats. But back in the day there was no such option. You had to use an inventory editor such as too many items or inf edit. Just talking about it gives me nostalgia because I might have used them once or twice. Here we have a naturally generated stone statue that resembles a guy doing something with his hand. Looks kinda sus, not gonna lie. The real question is, where are his eyes? I feel like he needs to have a name. How about Joe? Joe Mama! <laughs> It might look like a normal river from the ground, however, from a bird's eye view, we see that this is actually an intersection of six individual rivers. This is the perfect seed for a mega city with different biomes in each landmass. Sandiction, you might want to get on that. You're looking at a mansion that will shortly disappear. That's because inside is a ruined portal with lava next to it, which isn't an ideal situation for the pillagers. Watching this mansion burn makes me happy. God, I hate evokers. What makes this seed truly special is that the ruined portal actually isn't even ruined and it will automatically light up after a while so you can go into the nether right away just don't get killed by the TNT the reason why this world is special is because it has the largest bedrock cluster in all of Minecraft finding a bedrock formation this large required scanning through 3.6 quadrillion blocks if you think you're a no-lifer just keep in mind that someone spent 300 hours looking for this one of the newest mobs is DLA and it was supposed to be kind of rare only spawning in pillager outposts and woodland mansions. Well, it's not rare here. There's 58 of them in this woodland mansion. With this blue army, you'll never have to collect items ever again. This is an average mushroom island. And this is how the biggest mushroom island in all of Minecraft looks like. Quite the difference, eh? At what point do we just start calling it the mushroom continent? Walking from one end to the other takes almost 10 minutes. And if we take a look from above, we can see that it kinda resembles the shape of a certain country that I cannot name for monetization reasons. There are 8 super flat presets built into the game. The first gives you 230 layers of stone. The water world will spawn you in the middle of a deep ocean. The next preset is perhaps the friendliest, with plenty of trees, flowers and lava pools. The snowy kingdom is for those who love igloos. The bottomless pit has cobblestone instead of bedrock. The desert preset gives us desert pyramids, but if you don't like them, choose the next one, which has nothing but sandstone. And lastly, my favorite, the void preset. Set. The wandering trader doesn't have the best reputation. However, in Superflat, this one mob completely revolutionized the game. So much so that he's probably the most important mob after villagers. The wandering trader gives you access to all kinds of saplings, flowers, and even sand. There was a time not too long ago when you could create armor with all protection types. This took place at the early stages of the 1.14 update. Someone discovered that you can create the god armor set with four protection types on it. Of course this news spread quickly and once Mojang found out they patched it immediately. But they didn't check my ender chest. <laughs> You can shoot an invoker in midair and pick up the totem he drops to survive the fall. I can't wait to see this in the next manhunt, where there just happens to be a one-shotable evoker underneath tree. Nah, but in all seriousness, what makes this MLG hard is the fact that it's absolutely and utterly unrealistic. You're falling, you're surely gonna die, but you see four jungle saplings underneath you. How convenient! You whip out your bone meal, prepare your fast fingers, and boom, you just made a jungle tree. But that was suck. How 
can a jungle tree save me from dying? See, every jungle tree has vines and by landing on those vines, you can survive. This is the hardest clutch in all of Minecraft. Let's break it down. You're falling and there is a crimson fungi. You bone mill that fungi to make it grow into a crimson tree, which has a small chance of having weeping vines that can be used to cancel your fall. The amount of skill and luck required is unfathomable. You have a higher chance of finding Hero Prime than doing this MLG. Most skeletons hold their bow in the right hand, but Mojang wanted to be clever, so they made 11% of all skeletons spawn left-handed, which is actually based in reality, because roughly 11% of all people are left-handed. It just feels wrong seeing a skeleton hold the bow like that. Sometimes during the battle, you'll notice other zombies joining in. This is because you're fighting a leader zombie. 5% of all zombies spawn as leaders and have the ability to call reinforcements. But don't worry, there is a way around this. Just change the difficulty because leader zombies only spawn on hard. The most famous rare mob has to be the pink sheep. The chance of it spawning is 0.16%. Not only is the pink sheep quite rare, but it also clearly stands out among the other colors. This was especially true in the early pocket edition, where pink sheep looked like this. Baby piglins and baby hoglins love each other. Sometimes the baby piglins ride on top of a baby hoglin. However, in this case, there is a hard limit of three. So if you manage to find this mob, quickly take a screenshot before the baby piglins run away. Similarly to sheep, axolotls spawn in different colors. Pink, brown, cyan and yellow make up more than 99.9% .9 of all axolotls. That leaves us with the blue axolotl, which adds up the remaining 0.08%. The aquatic update brought a lot of fish into Minecraft and when I say a lot, I mean a couple thousand different animals. Sure, there's salmon, cod, pufferfish, but virtually all of the new fish are tropical fish. There's 22 default tropical fish skins that you will find most of the time. However, Mojang decided to spice things up and so they made it in a way where every tropical fish has a 10% chance to have a completely random shape, pattern, fins and color combination. Bats are probably the most useless mob but believe it or not bats have a really cool easter egg. Every year in October bats spawn way more frequently as an homage to Halloween. A hostile wolf may try to jump across a two block gap to get to you so it's best to keep wolves on your good side. Parrots start dancing when they hear a nearby jukebox and at one point all dancing parrots started rapidly changing colors. For a while we had a parrot that basically acted like a sheep named Jeb. Every night the wandering trader drinks a potion of invisibility and if you kill him while he's drinking there is a slight chance that he will drop the potion. Ocelots and cats are now two different mobs but they still have one thing in common. Neither of them take fall damage which is a reference to real life cats who always land on their feet. And no that's that's not a myth. I tested it with my own cats. The only thing worse than not patching up creeper holes is only replacing the top layer. This creates a dark spot where mobs can spawn, so either do it properly or use a torch. Not all horses are created equal, so make sure to find a fast one before making it your prime stallion. Quick horses are great for traveling, slow horses are great for leather. Getting lost in the nether because you didn't screenshot the coordinates of your portal is a rookie mistake. In general, constantly getting lost screams that you're a newbie. What's even worse is not knowing how coordinates work. Listen, if that's you, then close Minecraft and start paying attention in math. A super common mistake that Minecraft players do is destroying spawners. I get it, seeing a mob spawner for the first time can be scary, but all it takes is a couple of torches and that spawner is finished. When you're traveling across the ocean, watch out for monuments. Not doing so will result in you getting smacked with mining fatigue. You gotta pay attention when you're driving, even if you're driving a boat. One does not drive a boat. One cons a boat. One of the most underutilized features in all of Minecraft are subtitles. This isn't only useful for deaf players, it's made for everyone. You can find hidden lava pools using subtitles, you can hear when there's an axolotl nearby, and you can even use them to find mob spawners. When I was a kid, I used to create new worlds all the time. Only now I realized that I should have stuck to one world instead of creating a new one every time I was bored. Look, it's much better to have one 
one great world that you're truly proud of than 20 mediocre worlds that you can barely remember. Do you know what the rarest item used to be? Before jungles were added, the only way to get cocoa beans was finding a spawner, which wasn't an easy task. However, cocoa beans themselves weren't the rarest item. That title went to cookies. And the facts only get better. For instance, did you know that pressing F3 used to be insanely overpowered? In the beta days of Minecraft, using F3 showed the entity number of every single mob around you. Or in other words, it gave you wall hacks. Today we have super fast double elevators and elytras, but before those luxuries were a thing, players had to use ladders. The community figured out that you could leave one block gaps in between, and the ladder would still work. Believe me, this was well needed, because the crafting recipe used to give you just one single ladder for seven sticks. That's a scam if I've ever seen one. One of the weirdest updates was 1.7.2. It added a new integration into Minecraft, which allowed Twitch chat to have control over the game. Honestly, I'm glad Mojang got rid of this, because having Twitch chat in control of my world sounds like a nightmare. Finding a mansion is hard, but it is nowhere near as hard as finding a dungeon in 2011. In those days, spawners were incredibly rare, so finding one was the best feeling ever. The most exciting were the dungeons dungeons that generated on the surface. This had an even lower chance of happening, but at the same time they were much easier to find. If you're a new player, then you have no idea how hard the game used to be. Back then, just surviving the first night was a hard task. We didn't have shields, we didn't have totems, sprinting wasn't a thing, enchanting was insanely expensive. I think you get the point. It's just too easy nowadays. Why is the Elder Guardian considered a boss? You can easily beat it only using your fist. I mean, there's no way you could defeat the Wither like that. Well, unless you're a Wadzi. In 2020, this guy defeated the Wither by running around in circles and punching him with his fist. Unfortunately, most things don't last forever. And that certainly applies to hardcore worlds. Even the very best players sooner or later die. Recently, that player was a loony. Oh my god! He died in his nether base, which is one of the most impressive builds of all time. The nether wasn't made for beginners. Even the very first draft was quite scary. It was called Hellworld, and you'd spawn in a wooden house which was on a small island surrounded by an endless sea of lava. This was very sketchy, especially because fire used to spread incredibly fast. So if one of these trees caught on fire, all other trees would disappear in a matter of seconds. Lava has this weird mechanic where it creates basalt when it's next to these two blocks. And there is a ton of stuff you can do with this. You can build a crazy redstone machine like Mambo Jumbo, or you can make a super fast basalt generator that will produce more basalt than you'll ever need. Nether portals aren't merely for accessing the nether. They are just as important for going back into the overworld. One thing you should try next time you're coming back is bringing a friend with you. If you take a hoglin into the overworld, he will turn into a zoglin. This is the most aggressive mob in all of Minecraft. The zoglin will attack everything around him. Villagers, animals, iron golems, and even hoglins. Damn, you've really watched the whole 90 minutes. You're a legend. Now, but seriously, guys, thank you. 2022 has been by far the best year of my life. And I promise I'll do my best to make great videos in 2023 and beyond. Peace.